stepping in for Justin, who's always sick. Um, but if everybody settled in, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Ben Segetti from Microsoft and uh, tell you a little bit about his background, which goes on for ages and pages and pages. Um, which is phenomenal because uh, with a background from working from uh, aerospace um, missions with NASA all the way down to like um, uh, IoT devices, fitness trackers, doing analytics, data anal uh, uh, analytics and things like that, all the way now to uh, solutions on Hadoop and now with Microsoft, uh, he's going to be talking to us about um, the Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit. So, Ben. Good, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the kind introduction. Actually, I think I might be okay. Everyone here okay? I'd rather not use a mic. Okay. Great. I use it for the, for the recording. Okay, goodness. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Will do. Thank you. Okay, so right, uh, the Microsoft uh, Cognitive Toolkit. Uh, this is um, a, a relatively new deep learning framework uh, that has been open sourced uh, for over a year now. Uh, came out of Microsoft research and it's already in production a variety of different Microsoft tools and uh, services. So I'll just give you a background on, on how Microsoft's dealing with uh, deep learning today. Uh, it's pretty much uh, along a variety of a whole uh, portfolio of different products, right? Uh, one thing that I might touch on uh, later on, give if you have enough time, is the, the cognitive services that are currently available. These are pre-built deep learning models Focus on computer vision, speech, NLP that uh, are readily available as web services accessed via RESTful APIs. Right? Uh, everything down here um, was using these, uh, the, what we call CNTK, or what was formerly called CNTK, is the, the cognitive toolkit. Uh, Skype Translator itself, a lot of deep learning in the background there. Um, Cortana, the personal assistant, uh, if, you're not, if you're familiar with Siri and uh, Alexa, so same same vein, uh, deep learning back there. The Bing team uses deep learning extensively for search, for ads rele uh, uh, rele uh, relevance, relevance, and um, HoloLens. Uh, this is, again, another very new uh, product out of Microsoft's augmented uh, reality sort of tool. If you've seen it, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. And yeah, all of this is coming out of um, uh, the, the two Microsoft research teams, one in uh, Beijing and the other in Boston. No. So um, I briefly mentioned the cognitive services, a couple couple screenshots of a few apps that were made uh, um, a year ago. On the left is Howl.net, if you guys remember, it kind of went viral when it first uh, uh, came out. It's just a little app, a little uh, HTML, I think the whole thing was like 50 lines of HTML and JS, and, uh, and it tapped into one of these cognitive services, the APIs. And uh, it pretty much you just pass an image, and it would predict, it would first actually detect faces, and from there, um, make a prediction on the uh, individual's gender and age. Yeah. Uh, second one, the middle one uh, here, is a captions uh, bot, uh, similar to, uh, well, again, part of the uh, cognitive services. Uh, you just feed an image, and responds back with a sentence, what it thinks that it's actually seeing, right? Uh, thirdly is uh, is a, um, a prototype that uh, that was put together by one of our uh, partners, uh, this is Lieber, uh, they're a refrigerator manufacturer, and they started putting cameras within the refrigerators and pretty much detecting uh, all the objects that you see uh, sort of uh, to, to pretty good, um, with pretty good accuracy. Um, Speaking of um, image recognition, uh, so, so many of you might know the ImageNet data set, a uh, massive data set of just images, you know, cats, dogs, bicycles, chairs, that sort of thing. And there's a competition uh, that's been going on for a while, uh, internally across a variety of different uh, academic groups um, and, and other organizations that are you know, pretty much trying to get to classify the, what they see in these images. Uh, with uh, as low uh, as an error rate as possible, right? And in uh, 2015, um, uh, Microsoft actually hit, uh, pretty much got the lowest error rate, uh, uh, a little under 4%, which is uh, which was uh, unheard of at the time, right? Uh, big, big jump from, I uh, said, so the previous year what the, where Google um, excelled. And 
and um, uh, for, so that was on the vision side. On the audio side, uh, there's now a speech recognition, another sort of uh, um, milestone here that's been done is, is uh, being able to recognize uh, just audio and be able to sort of transcribe this with an error rate of 6%. And that's uh, practically where um, humans actually uh, start, you know, uh, start messing up. So, so we're matching human error rates in terms of uh, speech recognition. And all of this, everything I've mentioned here so far, all these different use cases, research papers, competitions, were all done with this um, the cognitive toolkit, formerly called CNTK. Actually, you still see it as CNTK, and GitHub is CNTK. Yeah. So um, it's, it's really easy to use. Uh, it's really it's meant to be just you know, something that you can come in, uh, define a few layers for your neural network, and not be bothered with the underlying Infrastructure, right? Uh, comes with a pretty, pretty um, rich set of tools. Uh, the library already built in. So this includes feed for neural, neural networks, convolution, uh, recurrent ne uh, networks. Oops. Right bridge there. Yeah. Um, long to so long short term models, deep structured semantic models, sequence to sequence models, and uh, list goes on. Right. It's optimized for GPUs. You can still use it on CPUs if you like, but really GPUs is it's, it's the real intention. And not just uh, not just a single GPU or one server's worth of GPUs, but this goes across a farm of servers powered by GPUs. This is the sort of the parallelization is actually done with using the MPI protocol. Okay, and uh, in terms of APIs. Um, so it has it's so the, the whole library itself is a C plus plus library. The code is a source code of C plus There is an internal language called uh, BrainScript, which you can use. But uh, but now there are APIs available for C sharp, .NET, of course C plus plus, and Python. This V two point uh, provided uh, in Python wrappers. Uh, it's available for Windows and Linux. So internally, we actually um, the Microsoft team. Um, so they might be using Windows for their development, but for actual big jobs, they throw it on a big Linux cluster, right? So that's that's just uh, that's just how it's done. And it's been, it's of course, as I mentioned, open source. It's been uh, active. The development has been active on there since January on uh, 2016. It's all on GitHub. Um, so yeah. Everything, everything is available. And, and by the way, this is um, a tool where the internal and the external are identical. So we're using the, the GitHub master, or a branch perhaps, but it's, it's, all, it's all on GitHub, right? Okay, so a few things. A um, few things to point out, two, two um, important uh, notes here. One is that you can build your, an arbitrary neural network. Okay, so you can actually define different layers, different types, uh, using this framework. So you can say, so this, and this is what's, what's actually quite novel, uh, innovative um, about this framework compared to some of the other ones like Torch, TensorFlow, MXNet, whatnot. You know? So here you can actually say, okay, I want a neural network where the first layer is dense, second one is a convolution, third is a recur recurrent, then followed by six dense ones, and such and such. You can actually stack them up as you wish, right? So you can actually, you can get really creative on, on the, the architecture that you put together, and of course try all these various permutations and see which ones really work best for you, right? There's a big gallery actually on um, on the site which I'll which I'll share in the end of what uh, what different architectures that some have tried and were uh, successful uh, with, you know. So you can take a look, and uh, and it's production ready. As I said, it's used internally on. In Variety of different uh, Microsoft solutions already, right? So um, it's true and tested from the production side. Uh, of course, there's you know, C++, so any model that you build, you can just put into production. There's a DLL, you call from C++, and there you go, you're making your classification, regression uh, uh, forecast, right? So um, it comes in sort of three steps. There's a reader, so depending on whether you're you know, processing text, audio, video, a set of, set of different readers available for for the data ingestion. There's of course a network that you build, the, the multi-layered uh, system, the architecture there, 
Uh, as I mentioned, again, it's, it's optimized for GPUs, but uh, CPUs work uh, just fine, so you can just install your laptop and play around if you like. And then for the training part, the various uh, different uh, sort of flavors of stochastic gradient descent, uh, because we are talking about really large data sets, so it uh, has to be sort of uh, some, some sto stochastic uh, um, uh, functionality in there as well, right? Okay, so talking about uh, building arbitrary networks. So here I'll give you sort of a, a very simple example of a two-layered uh, feed-forwards or a dense uh, system, right? So here, the, so X is here is our input, that's our features. There's a, there's a weights matrix followed by a, added a, to a, and then a, with an addition of a bias, right? That is our first layer, very straightforward. And again, it's just matrix multiplication and that's why GPU is going to play, right? Um, that sigma there is a little abbreviation for sigmoid function. For those of you who are familiar, it's just a little mapping of the real domain to the to unit range. Softmax is a similar function, yeah. So, and then the, the actual training, the criteria is, is cross entropy. That's a pretty uh, standard approach, yeah. So here, the actual code, this is now in brain script, would look like this. In Python, it looks very, something very similar. Again, I'll give you some links on, on some code, some actual tutorials. But that's it, two layer network, um, plus the uh, sort of loss function uh, defined and everything, ready to go. So we just uh, just define our whole network, you know. And you can of course build these as, as long as you like, layer them on. Um, you can bunch layers together and then reuse these bunches. So you can go macro in terms of layers. Um, and the Python API, you can actually put a for loop in, say, you know, you know for i to one to one to six, give me dense layers and then, you know, so really, really straightforward, okay? And in terms of the actual what the model looks like, um, so it is always a, a graph built, and this is something that's editable, right? So actually, so this is a, uh, in a sense, it's, um, it's executed after the, the graph is built, so you can actually just hold on, um, edit the graph, and then execute it, right? So, so everything's editable. So here you see the, the weights, the actual, uh, that's the matrix multiplication piece and the bias is coming in every step. You can go and change those. Uh, you can bring in, uh, so it's recurrent, you can actually bring in the previous steps, you know, the T minus one, that sort of thing. So it's all available here, yeah. yeah. Um, pretty straightforward. And oh, some, a few things that are, uh, that's actually really important here is automatic differentiation. So for stochastic gradient descent, as you know, that's the gradient, there's a, different, there's a differential there, and here you don't actually have to go and define the differential, you just pass it your loss, loss function, and uh, it'll just pretty much go and auto uh, differentiate for you. Yeah, uh, big deal. And, uh, and everything's clonable, so as I mentioned, you can make a block, um, some bunch of layers, and you like it, and you want to use it elsewhere as a sub-architecture of a big architecture, and just clone that piece and then and, uh, move it over. You know? And in terms of different layers, this is actually just something I screenshotted from the GitHub wiki page. Um, um, so it just uh, goes through some of the different layers that are currently available. Yeah, dense, convolution, uh, max pooling, uh, it goes, goes on, on and on. You know? So you can just play uh, with Legos with these, with these layers. Yeah. So getting to uh, something a little more fun, uh, actually a little demo. Uh, let's talk about a common uh, computer vision task, which is <coughs> classification or, or more importantly, object uh, detection. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, so very, uh, the example I gave earlier for the faces or all the different the little products within the refrigerator, this, this would uh, you know, fall under the, 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 this, this uh, object uh, detection category, right? So I'm gonna play a little video. This is something that was developed, this is some, some a, some work that was done by the Microsoft uh, Brazilian team in uh, conjunction with the security field, uh, firm out there. So they went ahead and they were putting together a lot of, uh, sort of video uh, detection tools. I hope the video goes through it. Let's see. Okay. So first one I think is a spatial we go on to the closet again. Excuse me. There we go. 
so now this is actually spatial uh, recognition. It's actually right. It's it's, it's finding people, naming them. Uh, it's an Arvo, right? So this is compared to a yeah, and classes are brought in and still still fellows yeah still recognized. And of course, you know, imagine mentioned what's detected there you know, the sunglass and yeah here's the yeah. <laughs> It'll actually identify yeah it's a vendetta mask, right? Um, so, so this is again, this is a joint product with a, with a security firm. So this actual use case that's that's out there, right? Uh, and hopefully this will be put into the production. Yeah. Here's a stocking. Those ladies were in stocking there. Actually, sketching up. Yeah. So yeah, it's classifying all these pretty correctly. And there's an alert mechanism for yeah when the fe when fellows coming in with a helmet. Again, it, it actually recognizes yeah uh, the individual. Uh, this one's pretty funny too. Yeah, it gets, it gets funnier, right? So some really cool stuff here. So, um, yeah, so right after, yeah, the mask comes off, it's okay. Yeah, actually, right, multiple people, right? Multiple gas. So this is vehicle, uh, vehicle tracking. So here, there's some space where actually um, the vehicle types are classified, and there's a velocity and color. Um, Prediction made as well, right? Um, so that's pretty neat. It gets it gets cooler. So and by the way, everything's real time, right? Everything we're seeing was real time. This is meant to be a real time system. Yeah. So yeah, event the, the event detection. So here you see, okay, so it's a it's a little busy uh, sort of on ramp there, and the fellow actually crossing, and this actually gets tagged as an as a as a sort of funny event. As a as a warning, right? Uh, this because that fellow is another piece. These, these guys get dropped off. This is Brazil, by the way. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's how it was. Um, yeah, so they're about to cross the highway. Again, they got the, that that event is about to be tagged as uh, right. So, yeah, give them a second. Traffic that down. Yeah. There, they're answer. So yeah, it gets tagged. Uh, Here's a similar one, I think a couple more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this is a real concern, right? This is actually a real, real use case. Um, <laughs> this is a big concern, yeah. Again, yeah, so it's, all these events get, get flagged. Um, this actually an employee of the city comes in pretty ballsy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps going to fast forward a little bit, uh, <laughs> given our time constraints. Yeah, helmet detection. This is I'm going to try to skip. Maybe go through this. You already saw something similar. So again, this for um, depending on the scenario. If someone has come to the helmet, you want to uh, tag that, send out a warning that some person shouldn't be walking around indoors with a helmet. So no, no need for that here. Uh, right. If I may. Halfway through, I just want to show one last piece, which is uh, so yeah, I'm gonna jump out, jump out of presentation. This is um, let's just play it here so I can fast forward. We saw that. Here we go, okay. This is now uh, abandoned object detection. Yeah, so the still frame first, you know, the, the, the sort of the control is defined, then someone comes in and just leaves an object. Right, there's a timer on there, after a few, um, it's like 30 seconds or something, it'll get flagged as an abandoned object. So it's ideal, ideal for any sort of, uh, sort of public uh, transportation, uh, sort of a, a public area, right? If something's abandoned, you want to uh, flag it uh, immediately. Or another simple, similar one. This, this one is where it tries to differentiate between, uh, similar to the first where you know, it's traffic and humans were caught in it. A similar scenario. Um, so it flags humans as, as alerts, but then uh, when caught,
cars come by, they'll just go through us. That's, that's the truth, right? Okay, so let me go continue. So all that, yeah, so this was done, I think when it was a matter of uh, three, four months that uh, these folks put this together. They already had the data sort of assembled, so the tough part in a sense was done, uh, the, the data collection. And they just went ahead and started feeding this uh, to a cluster of uh, GPUs uh, using CNTK and built out a variety of different models, right? Those are, each of those use cases had their own specific models. Okay. So um, currently there are uh, quite a few Go forward. Oh. The big lag. Apologies, technical difficulties here. Still stuck on here? Everything's on GitHub, including um, a variety of different tutorials and using different APIs. There are even Jupyter notebooks available, so you can actually just spin up Jupyter, all the documentation's there, and plotting, and just walk through these tutorials. Right, uh, uh, great, uh, so great set of resources. There's also Azure notebooks, uh, again, Jupyter notebooks hosted on, on Microsoft's cloud. Uh, these, uh, these, by the way, are, are currently actually free, so just, just Get your own uh, Azure notebook, and there are there's a there's a nice um, CNTK tutorial there as well. But more importantly, um, getting the actual use of, of GPUs. So on Azure right now we have um, GPU powered VMs. These are NVIDIA uh, GPUs, so they scale from I think there's uh, instance for one, two, and four GPUs on the same VM. Uh, so these can be used for anything. But in this case, there's actually a, um, an image built by our um, algorithms data science team, used internally and then shared sort of uh, publicly with everyone else, which comes pre-installed uh, and pre-configured with a variety of different machine learning tools, uh, including deep learning frameworks. So if you see the second paragraph there, you have MXNet, CNTK, TensorFlow, Keras, so everything is pre-configured to run on, on these GPUs, and you can just spin one of these things up. All the software is free, and uh, and yeah, just get just get busy uh, doing your uh, deep learning work. You know? A few links: um, cntk.ai is the um, is the actual uh, website. Um, so as I mentioned, there are quite a few. There's a gallery of architectures out there. So what others have tried. Uh, where you know where they've been actually really really powerful. What's really worked for them? So you can just browse those and just uh, clone it pretty much and, and go forward. You know, um, and everything else, right? Um, all the issues, the big wiki there too, um, and of course you know the pull requests are very much welcome. Um, so so please, you know, if you get if you get involved, do feel free to contribute. And uh, and that's it actually. That's my uh, brief little talk on CNTK. Thank you. Questions? Um, did I see the R bindings? R binding? R binding, so there, this has been asked for that. It's in the works. Um, I don't have a time frame for you. Okay. Yeah, so right now it's BrainScript, uh, CSharp.net, C, and Python. So the real-time was actually pretty easy. Um, so that is, it's computationally, uh, of course, not as expensive as, as a training bit, right? Um, so you can have these, once you have the, uh, the model actually generated, you could run them on CPUs. You don't necessarily even need the GPUs for the, 
for the prediction part for the operation. Part. So you could potentially actually have this on a relatively uh, you know, edge device, a relatively weak uh, processor. Okay, thank you very much.